There is an old saying that the pen is mightier than the sword. Well, if you had told me that years ago, I would have laughed in your face. Tell me that today and I would believe you. Reason being is because Kay Ivey, who is the governor for the state of Alabama, used that pen and signed into law probably one of the most restrictive abortion laws that we have ever seen. Now, a lot of people online have been going in on her, but before I go any further, doesn't Kate Ivey look like she's Laura Bush mixed with Barbara Bush mixed with George Herbert Walker Bush mixed with George um, W. Bush? mixed with Jeb Bush, mixed with the Queen of England, mixed with George Washington, mixed with the Quaker Oats man. Like she does, like she looks like she's a combination of all of those and then some. Now back to what I was saying. I had to have a little petty pendergrass moment right there. But this woman signed into law one of the biggest and restrictive abortion laws ever known to mankind. I've never seen anything quite like it. And she signed that thing quite class fast quick and in a hurry like i don't even think the ink dried on any of the signatures that were needed to even get it to her desk before she signed it you know usually they take some time with this they were like oh no we ain't got time to waste we ain't got time to wait this has to be signed into a law now asap Now, I think I've done a commentary about Kay Ivey before. That's why I recognize her face. But I can't remember what it was, but it wasn't good. Just like I'm talking about this right now, and it's not really in good taste, but whatever. I saw a lot of people online peddling this thing, how they say men should not control what women do with their bodies. And I've said it before. No, they shouldn't have control of what, they, of what women do with their bodies. However, if you're going to have that same outrage for those white men who signed those bills, who put those bills into motion, then you need to have the same energy going after Kay Ivey because she is the one who single handedly were able to sign that bill and make that anti abortion bill into an anti abortion law. That goes back to the pen is mightier than the sword theory. When she signed her John Hancock, her signature on that line where it needed to be signed, she made it possible for this to happen. Now, you say men should control what women do with their bodies. Well, here's a woman who basically signed, uh, pretty much put what a lot of women now are panicking about into motion. So technically speaking, it's really more her fault because she could have opposed it. But she knows what her base is. She knows who uh, butters her bread. And after all, she's also a Republican. She's a conservative in Alabama. And speaking of Alabama, I read somewhere today where they said Alabama ranks out of all 50 states, 50 in education. I said, well, that explains a lot. That means they are practically dead last as far as education goes, which means there are a lot of dumbasses in Alabama. And as you can see, you have them in office, but that's the fault of the people who voted them in. And I would not be surprised if she was a Trump supporter. Remember, over 50 percent of white women voted for Donald Trump to get in the office. I would not be surprised if she was one of the ones that voted him in. And I would not be surprised if it was a lot of white women who did a lot of voting when it comes to these elections down in Alabama to get those people in who made this into a bill and got her to in office to get this bill signed. Because remember, a lot of them were probably backing her up because she was probably going against another guy and they wanted to see a woman there. So a lot of this is backfiring on them and they don't know what to do. They can try to cross state lines all they want to to try to get an abortion. But I'm telling you, it's hitting everywhere. The latest place I've seen this abortion bill hit is Missouri. So now we have Georgia, Ohio, Alabama, and Missouri. That's four 
state right there. And all of those states are neighboring states, meaning they are very close in proximity with each other. White women, they are trying their best to make sure you do not have an abortion. They want you to have as many kids as possible while your birth rates are already on the decline. But I think, as a matter of fact, scratch that. I know it's already too late. It's too late for y'all. Y'all are a few years late. And I do mean a few, 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 few years late. Like, time is ticking and your time is almost up. You're literally on borrowed time. And time is something you don't get back. Once it's gone, it's gone. So I want people to keep that same energy they have for those white men who proposed these bills, who voted these bills, to have the same energy for this K. Ivy woman who signed that bill to make it a law because she could have chose not to sign it. And to my knowledge, they said she didn't even really know what the hell she was signing. And I said, if that's the case, then that pretty much proves Alabama ranking 50th in the state of education, um, as 50 uh, in education, uh, it pretty much proves it, um, proves it deserves to be in that spot. But this is gonna, this is gonna, <laughs> I'm really interested in seeing how, all of this is going to play out. This is very interesting. I really, I, I didn't think I was going to be this invested into this, but this is going to be an interesting turn of events right here. It's going to be a lot of pissed off white women, pissed off with their men in particular. Now, a lot of people were saying, "How does black women play a role into this?" Well, remember back in the day, they used to put. Planned Parenthood in a lot of black neighborhoods with hopes that black women would go there. Unfortunately, some did. But now it's like the tables are turning. See, they are seeing that many other groups of people are having more kids. And remember, I did a video where it said that they have to have a certain amount of children in order to keep their numbers up Two at the most. Two at least, I'm sorry, not the most, but at least. Some are having one Many are having none, but they see all these other groups that are not white having two, three, four, five, sometimes even damn near 10 kids, even in this economy. And it's scaring them. Why do you think many of them try to procreate with those of another race, specifically black, in hopes that that child procreates with another white person and then that child procreates with a white person? That way, three generations later, they're white again. But even by that time, it'll still be too late. They're like, at this point, there's really nothing they can do. There's now a few things that are undefeated in this world. The wall, the internet, at this point, that opioid plague, and now you can tack low birth rates. It is what it is. But I would just like to know if people are going to go after her. Because I have yet to see many people who have gone after those men, and rightfully so, because they proposed the bill. But I have yet to see them really have that same energy towards her. It's almost like they are completely omitting her from the equation. I'm like, y'all going after Miss Charlie and completely dodging Miss Ann. But, hey, it is what it is. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this down in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, and I will talk to you in the next one.